the dark that's a big one um what did you say dogs yeah that's another one um or heights what yes that's that's a big one for our family (laughs) dishes yes responsibility huh rejection yeah that's a big one for campus teams too what was that pests yeah okay so yeah there's a lot of fears and um hmm yeah, that's, that's one for me, too, <laughs> um, so bear with me. Um, but it's important to recognize our fears and the origin of fear and where fear comes from. So when I was talking to my dad before I um, got up here, we were talking, and he pointed out an interesting fact to me, that the Bible never tells us to fear anything. Oh, well, the Bible only tells us to fear God. And um, there's a couple of different, like, meanings of fearing God. But the Bible doesn't tell us to fear, like, Satan or to fear dogs or to fear heights or to fear rejection or other things like that, like we mentioned. But the Bible tells us to fear God. And um, normally well, how we think of that is to fear God as and to respect him. And that is true. We need to respect him. But also um, there's a story about Ellen White when she was in vision and she was um, before the throne of God. And she was, like, literally terrified because of her sin. So because of our sin, we can't, like, survive in God's presence. So that kind of, like, makes a fear for God. But that doesn't mean we need to, like, be scared of him because he loves us, right? So that's just kind of an interesting fact that the Bible only tells us to fear God and doesn't tell us to fear um, things or other people or ideas and stuff like that. Um, So it seems like we usually get it backwards. You know, we, we fear those things, and we don't always fear God. And it's important to get that right. So today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite Bible characters, David, and he had his fears in the right place. So um, also another thing to notice about fear is a lot of times fear is selfish. Like when, like we said, the fear of the dark or fear of rejection, stuff like that, it's more about ourselves than anybody else. Like in the fear of the dark, we're scared that there's something in the dark that might hurt us or we're scared of falling off of something high, we're scared of heights, or we're scared of the dog because we're scared the dog might hurt us. So a lot of times fear has a selfish motive and a self-protecting kind of thing. Um, So yeah, David. So David, he was a teen, just like us. You know, he probably faced a lot of the same situations and a lot of the same problems and stuff, but there was something different about David. He was committed, and that's kind of like the theme of this week, right? So I thought David was a good example of commitment to God, because the Bible even says, you know, he was a man after God's own heart. Oh, my goodness. I forgot my Bible. Could I borrow a Bible? Sorry. If you have your Bibles, I was going to bring it for Sam. Okay, yeah, thank you. My V doesn't really help if the person forgets to Bible. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, can you turn with me to 1 Samuel 17? Okay, 1 
Samuel 17. Um, let me get there. Okay. So in this, this is the story of David and Goliath. And here, um, kind of setting the scene, you know, Israel is at battle again with the Philistines, and there's Goliath there. And he's, nobody really wants to fight Goliath because, of course, you know, he's the champion, and he's a giant, and they're all fearful of Goliath. And so I just want to read verse 8. If anybody had their Bible would be willing to read verse 8. Okay, so um, here um, we know the story, and Goliath is defying the armies of God, basically saying, you know, like, oh, come find me. He's kind of like making fun of them. And this is when David shows up on the scene, and I picture it as David, he kind of like gets some holy wrath, and he gets kind of mad. And um, he's like, how can Goliath get away with this? How, is, how can we just sit here while he's over there, like, talking bad about God and talking bad about us? and we're God's people, and stuff like that. So um, he's like, there has to be something done. And so he offers to go, and that's kind of a very fearless move on him, too, because, like, he's just a teenager, right? David, he didn't have any experience. I mean, okay, so he did have experience fighting, like, animals, but he never had experience, like, fighting in a battle. And Goliath was, like, a giant and a champion warrior. So um, to everybody else, it seemed like David would lose. And even if you keep reading, it talks about how um, his brothers kind of like tried to discourage him and also how the king was like doubting him a little bit. And um, it's like, okay, you can take my armor and stuff. But David's like, no, like we got this. God and I got this. And um, I don't think everybody else thought David was going to die, but David didn't think he was die. I don't think he would have gone into that battle if he thought he was going to lose. So that's important because he had his fear in the right place, and he had faith in God. So yes, fear versus faith. What is this? So David, he was fearless of Goliath because he had his faith in God. So faith is the opposite of fear. Um, he didn't have to, when he heard that Goliath was defying the armies of God, he didn't think about himself, and he didn't think, like, what would happen if I got killed? He thought about what is happening to God's name right now? What is, um, how do you say it? Like, what is happening to God's reputation? And that's what he thought about, and that's what made him fearless, because he was thinking about God, not himself. So um, when we focus on God, the fearful things that normally would seem scary to us um, just become small and unimportant really like they're little they're God can conquer those fears so here's the key to fearlessness in this quote would somebody be willing to read it So yes, the key to fearlessness is talk and act like our faith is invincible. Um, and this is what David did um, in verse, um, the verse where, okay, so we know where David is like telling him that, telling Goliath, when Goliath is like laughing, kind of making fun of him, and David's like, no, I come to you in the name of God. And um, that's what David was doing. He was acting and speaking like his faith was invincible. Um, he might have been scared. We don't really know. But his faith was bigger than his fear. And that's the most important part is to, instead of worrying about ourselves, but to keep our faith and our focus on God. In um, Patriarchs and Prophets, Ellen White says that there was a ring of fearlessness in his tone, a look of triumph and rejoicing on his fair countenance. So, um, 
but just kind of like reinstating that he he took his faith seriously and that's what made him be fearless so that doesn't mean we're never going to fear but it just means that our faith has to be bigger than our fears so how can we make this like apply to our life today um you're probably thinking like you know we don't have giants at our door like trying to kill us how is that actually what are the giants in our lives the giants are the fears that we face that we mentioned earlier you know like rejection other things like that and even like the little things like pests or dogs or stuff like that um we have to realize that god is bigger than our fears so um it's kind of like cameron where's cameron he was saying earlier um yesterday about like being scared of the petty things is that kind of i kind of got that idea um where like sometimes we're scared to do things because it's kind of petty or like um you know, if we're going to just, like, share with people or just, like, do things and we're worried about it because we think it's pe- petty, but those same things, we don't need to be scared of that either. So, also, if you would turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew 6, Matthew six twenty-five through 31, let me get there. Would somebody be willing to read that who has their Bible? 25 through 31, sorry. Matthew 6, 25 through 31. Thank you. So I want to say some, like, we don't always think of it, but sometimes our worries are the same as our fears. And um, in the Bible here, it's telling us that we don't need to worry because he says, oh, you have little faith. If we have faith, our worries and our little petty fears aren't going to be a problem because we can have that faith in God and um, we're fully committed and focused on God, then we know that Christ is going to be with us every step of the way, and there aren't going to be any worries or fears, and because we know that he's got it. And also, um, I just want to read verse 34. Because it says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is the trouble. So we shouldn't, sometimes I know like as, like, high schooler, teenager, whatever, especially like the seniors, you're getting ready, you're, to go out into the world, what are you going to do, how is college going to work, a job, all those kind of things, and the Bible says we don't need to worry about that, it doesn't mean we need to like not plan, but we should just put that in God's hands and just trust him, so yeah, that was another point about that, so then, now commit, what is having, being fearless have to do with committing, Um, I just want to say, it's like everything, everything that has to do with fearlessness is committing. We have to fully commit ourselves to God and lay all our worries and all our fears at his feet, and then we can be fully fearless. And also, sometimes we can be fearful to commit because we think um, people won't treat us the same way or um, people will think of us like bad or whatever when we fully commit to God. And we also need to be fearless to fully commit. And that's what David did. He didn't care about um, what his brothers or the king was saying that he might die. He just focused on God, and he talked and he acted like his faith was invincible. So I have one last verse that I want to share with you guys. Deuteronomy 3.6. Would somebody be willing to read that? Okay, so I just want to challenge you guys today to take your focus off of your fears, off of your worries, and put your focus on God and have faith in his promises. And then, can we really quick sing um, the song in the back of the hymnal, Be Strong in the Lord? Yeah, that one. We can just sing like the first verse, I guess. That's kind of late.
Let's pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for um, the strength to be fearless. talking about getting out of your comfort zone and yeah so <laughs> how do you get out of your comfort zone or why would you get out of your comfort zone and I started to share about canvassing and one thing that helped me this past summer was um, to think if I was in the parking lot and I was scared to go I would just say Julia what is the worst thing that could happen to you right now and then I'm like, I could die. So, <laughs> but, but, then I was like, okay, if I die, then the next thing I'll know is my Jesus coming to get me. Hmm. And so then this guy brought up the verse that to live for Christ is what? Dying is gain. Dying is gain. So, I don't know, that was important. I don't know, I think in the topic of moving fearlessly, um, we kind of fear, like, when we're gonna die and what's gonna be like that or on that whole event, but you know, to die is gain. If we're dying for Christ, then our in our whole lives are moving towards that point, then we've gained so much. And anyone over here? We didn't talk much about it, but we kind of mentioned it. But one thing I've noticed that a lot of people are getting out of our comfort zone. Canvassing was a way of doing that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mentioned that. We did too. And uh, what's that? We did too. Yeah. 
So uh, I think that people's fear of dying is maybe at some point you may have that mechanism. But I think the biggest thing is the fear of rejection. And um, so anyway, that was just something that, that we kind of observed. I think God has set up Canison for, for our good, for our training for us. Good training for our martyrdom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think um, that's often true because I know the first day, because I just went on my first canvassing trip, or break, and the first day we were going to buy businesses. And businesses can come to, sometimes be very, um, you don't know what to expect because it's not just like a house, you know, with a house, things are pretty much the same. With a business, you have no idea, you know, is the person cutting someone's hair right now? Do they actually want to talk? Do I need to ask for the manager? Who, you know, so um, we were going through that day and I was, I was shadowing Angela. And um, I was going to a couple different doors, or businesses, and I was, I was trying to, you know, take the lead a few times. And I think the, the, what was the thing for me that was the scariest was, um, was my rejection because I'm not doing this right, you know? And I think that's a, you know, something to think about. You want to, you know, be aware of how you could be better at saying it, but um, there's a difference between dwelling on the fact that my, I just not, I, I must not be good enough. I must not, like. There's there's a difference between wallowing in failure and looking to how you can solve a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So um, fear doesn't help you solve the problem most of the time. It just. Uh, involves the, it just uh, engages the limbic system and moves you more towards fight or flight. It doesn't engage your frontal lobe. Um, and so it was very interesting that you, you said uh, that the thing that you would say was, what's the worst that can happen, right? Um, when we were back at the table, I was trying to think of what to say up here. And <laughs> I, I said to, <laughs> to someone across the table, I said, there was this very valuable thought that we were talking about. And I don't know what it was. <laughs> and, and Mrs. Holland saying, I need to go up there now. And, and so, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> right? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, if I had nothing to say, I'm sure your discussion was a blessing and we'll be blessed by the special music. And even if someone, even if you all laugh at me, like, I've been with y'all a long time. I'm pretty sure none of you are going to kill me, so I don't have to be scared of death. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's really true. There's actually um, this Vsauce episode that talked about how all fears are linked somehow to death. And he kind of you know, said it was like the spider web of fear, and the death, death was in the center, and all the fears were somehow related to death. And I thought it was amazing that God gives us a way to not have to be afraid of death. Like, there's, it's really, once you learn about what God has in store for us and, and the fact that sleep is just, or death is just a sleep, it's just like, for the person who's experienced death, it's like a portal through time. And for the people outside, uh, for the people that, you know, ex see someone die, um, they can have hope that they'll see that person again as well. And so he takes, once you have that trust in God, he just rips the very foundation of every fear out of, out of your life. Once that permeates and just sinks in the fact that God loves you and that he has a plan, you know, of the, that you don't have to fear death. Once that's taken away, you really don't have to fear anything. Um, so yeah, get to know God. If you don't want to have fear, because fear will cripple you. And I wonder how many 
risks we have not taken for God because of fear. How many things we've, how many times we've limited God's power because of fear. And I, I think that's very true that faith is very close to the opposite of fear because our faith is the only thing that limits God. And fear definitely saps our faith. Right, we'll have special music now. So, uh, I don't think he's asking, but <laughs> so Cameron was just speaking about. Um, what is the major truth? It shouldn't be a hard quiz for you. What's the major truth that we need to have to get rid of our fear? What we need to know to get rid of our fear? Uh, in control. That death is not the end. Death is asleep. And at the end, it's an entrance, entrance into a much brighter day. In this life on earth. And, you know, we can think that, but, and we can believe what God said about that. And it's good to take God as a word because He is true, but how do we know that He's true? Part of it is because He's done it already. Christ actually did die and rose again. And we can know. We can see, not just, not just see the words, which the word of God is powerful, but we can see that he did it and have faith in him in that way. So the song we're going to be singing is, In Christ Alone, Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. Our hope is based on his salvation, his death for us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of This is the power of Christ in me from 
life's first cry to the final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns and calls me home here in the power of Christ. so amazing that that you saw through history you saw that there would be years an era where your children would be separated from you by sin by fear by selfishness but you knew that and you prepared for it, and you gave us a way to have no fear. A remedy for all fears. And you gave us a father, and you needed one. You give us hope when we don't see any. You give us faith when we're tempted to be afraid. And we thank you for that. And we thank you that you have given us evidence that we can rise again. We want to see you in heaven someday. And that won't happen if we don't commit, and we cannot commit without your power. So here in the power of Christ, we wish to stand.